Okay. I will begin my speech in three, two, one. So in today's society, what does middle what do middle class parents tend to look like, right? So um, middle class parents either grew up um, like at relatively middle class, or they have, uh, or they even came from like a low income family, right? And eventually worked their way up to, to the middle class due to like previous wars or um, previous economic situations, right? Um, for example, like parents in China, right? Um, that's what they had to go through, right? And um, so um, as a middle class parent, they understand the importance of financial gain and stability, right? Because um, like financial stability is a very important factor and how it affects like someone's quality of right of life, right? And um, we must note and remember that today's motion is an actor, to, uh, today's debate is an actor debate, right? So we're only um, considering the perspective of a middle class parent. So I would like to talk briefly about um, what this type of narrative looks like, right? What, what this middle class parent would be trying like trying to express to the children. So firstly, what financial gain really means in this motion is having at least a stable income, right? Like enough to feed yourself, enough to have like uh, feed yourself and your family and have a good life outside of your job, like have enough to pay for like your children's tuition if you have children or um, Self, right um and um this may mean having to like climb a ladder climb some sort of ladder within some sort of industry um and especially for young people who are just getting started on their job hunt and becoming financial in, fin financially independent and getting money to spend on their own right um parents like this this motion mainly affects these types of like more more so teenagers rather than like just like babies right um and um now a second part of this narrative is like money plays a huge role in people's career choices right so most people's career choices are going to be hugely affected by what they can earn from the job because that's th what will support their lives and give them the main source of income. Um, however, a clarification on this front is that if you actually don't love what you do enough, you won't be very good at the job anyways, right? Because in order to be good at something, you need ha to have enough passion to work at it or even gain the skills as like a teenager um, in the first place. So it, uh, what this narrative will look like would be more like choosing a higher paying job versus a lower paying job in a sector or in a few different career choices um, that you already enjoy enough of, right? Because it's unlikely that a the higher paying job um, will be something in a completely polar opposite direction of what you do or what you love, because it's simply just not realistic. Like you're not going to be good at something that you like, you absolutely hate and there's more like and there's most likely that there will be another career choice that you enjoy more than and um will have a high pay, higher paying job right so the child will end up pursuing a direction that is both feasible aligned with their skills as well as something that they enjoy enough to have the skills to do that in the first place so like parents won't be necessarily encouraging like uh, it, be encouraged to control the jobs themselves that the children choose to pursue right like they will instead take note of what the children enjoy what they're skilled at and based on that um as a middle class parent they will remind the children to earn enough money while pursuing a job that they are good at and that they enjoy. Um, so now moving on to my arguments. So the first one is that this ensures that the children, that the child grows up to at least have stability. Now, um, the importance of stability, yeah. as I already mentioned, um, I'll take the POI in a second. Um, financial stability can allow um, these children to do what, like what natural freedom to do so. Like these middle-class parents, um, but these middle-class like people, these children will need to be, have a steady income uh, from a higher paying job first. For example, I'd like to take an example of Simu Liu, the guy who acted Shang-Chi, right? He started as an accountant, then he landed the role as Shang-Chi. But if he didn't actually have this job for like, what, like five to, I, I'm not quite sure, but like more than five years, if he worked as an actor 100% of the time, if his parents didn't instill these values of at least like having stable income, um, he would not have, he would have most likely been casted as like an extra um, in most movies and ended up broke, right? Um, because, and because he chose to like become an act, a full-time actor, um, he didn't like, might most likely didn't go to college or doesn't have much of a resume due to um, only having acted before and therefore can't get a well-paying job after like being broke. Um, and what this means is that um, he would have only been thinking about getting food and paying the bills and would not have had enough time to even practice acting or find the Shang-Chi job so that he would not have even become an actor, right? So having this financial stability to begin with was crucial for like 
um, him to even land this role. And um, we're showing you that um, just because you have financial stability doesn't mean that you can't like pursue anything else, right? Um, so the worst case scenario in this case, right, the child will grow up to have a well-paying job that they enjoy an okay amount, right? And um, the extra money will be able to use um, for other luxuries. Like if they want to learn art, they can have enough money to at least buy like painting, like, um, you know, painting supplies or whatnot. Um, and we think that that's already pretty good because the child's happiness will be um, fulfilled and like, you know, they're not starving. And, you know, it's, it's um, all around just beneficial for the child. Um, before I move on, I'll take a POI. Okay, no POIs, great. Um, next, I'd like to move on to the principle, which is the role of a parent, right? Now, on the obligation of a parent, right? What is it? It is to prepare the child for real life. In real life, people are not going to have a 100% success rate. And uh, unlike like extremely wealthy people, um, these people don't have a safety net, right? Like these parents are going to need to be realistic with these children um, because they, they have more experiences and um, having to earn their keep, right? They understand what life is like and having and what having no financial stability will be like. And it is their job to show this to their children to ensure that they're not, they don't end up like dirt poor, right? Um, like it's, um, it's okay if the child chooses not to listen, but if parents feel their obligation um, as a parent, like which is to instill these values in their child, then um, it's like, it's they're not fulfilling their role as a parent, um, which is goes against this principle. Now, finally, I would like to thirdly talk about what a middle class parent wants, right? They want their child to stand up on their own two feet. Like as a middle class parent, um, they know what it's like to live from paycheck to paycheck and financial stability matters, right? Like if a child grows up to work at, my, at a McDonald's as a failed actor, the middle-class parent would likely have to support the child. But middle, the middle-class parent being a middle-class person probably had a lot of like college loans or had to pay off for a lot of like the child's education and childhood, right? Like, so overall they simply wouldn't have enough money to keep the entire family afloat anymore. So the impact of this would be that no one would essentially be happy. The parents would not have enough money to support to keep supporting this child who is supposed to be an adult with a like a stable enough job um and they won't and this child wouldn't have enough to even pursue what they wanted originally which was for example seeing the view to become an actor which is overall worse off um so overall i've proven to you why um this motion on proposition side um both fulfills the role of a parent and um ensures a good quality of life for the child which is um which is a, which is the biggest part of today's debate thank you very much Thank you for that speech. We'll now call on the leader of opposition. Hello. Hi. Oh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Because we didn't connect any. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I'm just scared it's awesome. Am I still audible? Yes, you are audible. All right, great. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, set. Set. Um, oh my god, where's the camera? Okay, <laughs> um, I apologize because I'm actually outside right now for another competition. Um, okay, all right. Starting in three, two, one. Today's debate is about whether or not it's better to orient the child to the belief that fulfillment in career is derived primarily from financial aid, right? But today, state government has failed and they have completely neglected the children. They have told us about how it's in the parents' best interest, but they've completely failed to tell us whether or not it is good for the child. They have failed to tell us whether or not this is something that the children actually want, but they only tell us that this is something that the parents want, but they don't tell us whether the children actually want that. So the debate is about whether or not it's in the parents' best interest to do so, whether or not it's good for the child. And today, our team wants to prove to you why it's actually bad to orient your child to this belief, right? So firstly, let's start off with Cuba, right? Today, the first thing that they said to us, right, is that Financial stability affects someone's life. They tell you that they want financial stability for the child, right? Now, here's the, here's the thing, right? 
financial stability does not equate to financial gain. Gain and stability are two completely different words. Right? The computer is clearly in this notion to tell us that we want to to prioritize financial stability as if that doesn't exist on our side. However, on this side, it's not telling the child to be stable. They're not telling the child to get a, like, a stable 9 to 5 job that can help the child survive. They're telling you that you must always earn more money. If you don't earn more money, you're you're not fulfilled in your career. If you don't try to get more money, if you don't try to gain more money, then you're not a person that has succeeded in that career. That is what their team is trying to say. And I think that their case has yeah. come a lot wrong, considering how they just told us that the entire case is about financial stability. And I don't think that's exclusive to their sides at all. Um, and yes, the POI. In a world where like, in a world where like, our motion states that like fulfillment in career is one where you gain enough money and financial gain and financial stability are not mutually like exclusive. Can you repeat that? It's a little soft. No, like basically what I'm saying is that financial gain and financial stability are not mutually exclusive. Can you rebut this? Well, yeah, they're not. Okay, understand that the motion is about financial gain. It doesn't mean that we're telling our child to just go and be a poor person and never work for the rest of your life. However, on your side, you're telling that the child you should always prioritize gaining more money. And we're telling you, it's just a bad idea to tell them to try to gain more money, right? They tell you that it's a bad idea to tell the child to always prioritize their money and tell them that you're only fulfilled in your career when you get more money. That's not, that's not something that we should be supporting, right? So moving on to the next level, so they tell you that they can still ensure financial stability to some extent. And, it's, and they give you the example, right? Of Sin Wu Liu, of him being an accountant for like five years before becoming an anchor, right? So the thing is, not everyone is Sin Wu Liu, right? You can't just use Sin Wu Liu as an example and tell us that, oh, apparently I can be just like Sin Wu Liu. And also, considering how Sin Wu Liu actually has talent for being an actor, she has the ability to branch out from being an accountant and to be an actor, right? Not all of us do. And not all of us prioritize financial gains. Sin Wu Liu doesn't prioritize financial gains. He's prioritizing doing something he likes, he's prioritizing doing being an actor, something that he's like, something that he wants to do. He's not prioritizing gaining more money. He's prioritizing doing something that he loves. And that's what our team is trying to tell you. To be like Simu Liu and choose something you love over being an accountant, which probably earns a more stable job, right? Because if you're an accountant, you can always have stable money. But being an actor, you might not necessarily get roles. That's what Simu Liu is about. Simu Liu is about doing something he loves, not about financial gain, right? All right. Now, let's just continue on with our team's point, right? Let's actually give us a characterization, an accurate characterization of this thing. What exactly is this motion about? So about this house as a middle class parent, right? What exactly is a middle class? Middle class people aren't poor. They have financial stability already in the status quo, right? Because they have a stable job, they have a stable income. They're not under financial strain or pressure. They're in the middle class. They're not in the lower class. They're not in the upper class. They're in the middle. They have money. They can survive with that money. And I don't understand why exactly it is true that people have that they are poor and they have to so prioritize financial stability when they already have financial stability in the status quo, right? So they have a good salary, they have a good job. And I don't understand why you're telling these people who already have a like, stable life and tell them, tell their child that you should not be like us and actually prioritize more money, right? So what does it give the parents want? They want their best for the child, they want the child to get cute. Let me tell you that it's the wrong thing to tell the child that you only get fulfillment for your career when you earn more money. So what are the children? Because today, the government has completely neglected children. They have completely kicked out children from this debate. And this debate is entirely about children, right? What are the children? They're in the age where all they need is to have fun in a world with their friends, right? The child being happy is the primary thing that the child, that the parents care about. Because both sides say, want the child to be happy. But government tells you that they only get happy when they earn more money. And I tell you that's the wrong thing to tell the children, right? So some, when, something you teach a child when they're young, and you orient them to this belief, they will believe that for the rest of their life, no matter if that's if that, child, if that type of mindset is good or bad, right? And then we tell you that's the wrong thing. These children, just like all of us, have the principle, so they have the right to choose. They have the right to choose what they want. Because it's their life, not the parents' life. Why exactly should the parent have the right to shape their children when children are just human, just like us, and also have the right to choose, right? And I tell you that today, in today's debate, for people in Korea, it looks like happiness over money or money over happiness. On our team, the counterfactual looks like orienting yourself to the belief that fulfillment in career is not derived primarily from financial gain, but fulfillment in your career is a lot of things and it's up for the child to decide. Let's give you what exactly our team brings. Right? Let's bring to you the firstly, the moral argument of why the world is problematic. Firstly, is that we tell you about the principle of choice and how it actually affects the child. What is the problem here? The government comes up and tells you it's necessary to person financial gain to be fulfilled to actually have financial stability, they tell you it's like not true, right? It's actually they tell you that you only are fulfilled when you earn more money. They tell you that's a complete mindset that shouldn't be supported. Why? Right? 
Firstly, the meaning of fulfillment is arbitrary, right? Some people may find fulfillment in finding romance, to work in their dream job, or just having a comfortable average life, right? It's extremely subjective to a person themselves. And if you force them to one thing, it's likely going to be like a job they don't like because they're only prioritizing financial gain. They're prioritizing the job that earns the most money rather than something they actually love, right? So we should say, even if they hate that job, you've already oriented them to the belief that they should always earn more money regardless whether or not they like that job. So it's going to be even more work because they start as a young child going to class and accepting education for something that they don't even like because you're telling them they should always prioritize financial gain. So the outcome is that they're probably going to think that they wasted half of their life when they like die. They're probably going to have regrets of their life. Like, why did I listen to my parents and just prioritize financial gain? Like, why am I always chasing more money? And I could just be happy with what I had, be happy with the stable job that I had, with the stable income that I had, with the family that I had. But why am I always chasing more money? That is what is going to happen on your side, right? They tell you that it's a bad thing. Because so the people shouldn't be determined like financial gain, right? Because if children accept it as far, then they will just always prioritize money, prioritize money, prioritize money. They don't care about like happiness, they don't care about their friends, they don't care about doing something that they love, they only care about money, right? Then children should have the right to choose what they think is fulfillment. The trade off here today today is the money versus morality, right? They tell you that today on government team, they have traded off morality, they have killed off the meaning of fulfillment just for more money. Life has given you a set of cards to try to make the best out of it, right? Like they've been born as a middle class child and they now have to make the most out of it and find their own self fulfillment. Fulfillment is what we choose to make out of it. It's unfair to say that just because someone is a factory worker, just because they're a poor person, then they're less fulfilled than a rich person. It's unfair because there's no metric to determine what exactly fulfillment is, right? The fulfillment in career can mean many things. You can't tell me that a painter that earns like maybe like 10K per month is less fulfilled they're like a doctor who earns like a 100k per month, right? Because fulfillment in career can mean many things. It can mean the process of getting a stable income. It can mean doing something that you love. And therefore, for the principle of choice, we believe that today we should propose a motion. Thank you. Thank you for that speech. We'll now call on the Deputy Prime Minister. I cannot confirm that I am audible and visible. Well, currently, yes. with the lights, but yeah. Um, I'll be beginning my speech in three, two, one. From the entirety of Prime Minister, uh, of the Leader of Opposition speech, I think it's ridiculous that they completely ignore that this is not a policy motion. This is an actor motion where stakeholders are more important. And in today's debate, the stakeholder we want to focus on are parents and what they believe is good. Note that we are not just neglecting the child as, as like opposition accuses us of. We tell you about why it's better that they have a stable and stable life where they can acquire happiness outside of their career than one where they are struggling and that affects all areas, something I'll talk later about in my speech. A few rebuttals. They tell you that like financial gain and financial stability is different, but the narrative we promote is that a fulfilling career is one where you gain money. If we go by opposition's model, then there's really no definition of a fulfilling career because there's no limit to the amounts of money that you make. So then what counts as a fulfilling career? They haven't answered this at all. And we think that like if you have the term of a fulfilling degree, a fulfilling career, just something like that uh, uh, exists. On government, I think that we can control the narratives better. And the narrative we tell you we want to promote in my first speaker speech, we spent so long talking about this, is that a fulfilling career is one where you make money enough to be enough that that parents think this counts as financial gain. Note, this isn't a policy debate. This isn't about a set amount of money that qualifies as financial gain. This is specific to every parent, to every single household, and the meaning of financial gain is different to every parent. Opposition can't just come up here and label financial gain as some metric that goes on endlessly. Parents are parents love their children and that's what they want the best for them. They're not going to force their child into working a job that they don't like more and more and more and more for these money, even at the cost of their extreme mental health. What we rather think is going to be like a push. For example, if, if the child wants to pursue like some sort of career as like a street musician, parents would probably say, maybe you should like become an accountant instead, but they're not going to actually force them. They're not going to say that like, oh, if you don't pursue a, a career as an accountant, we're going to kick you out of this house. That's something that that opposition's entire entire case hinges on and it's something that we tell you is not going to happen because parents are not going to be at the point where they're like just going to ostracize themselves by the child from the child because the child doesn't want to be like an accountant we think it's just going to be a bit of a nudge there's nothing that forces the parent into specifically doing it there's nothing that forces the child into like not being able to like choose it if they think if they want to defy their parents and still go for that route they're free to be able to the child still has the right to choose so proper so opposition can't just come up to us and accuse us of being principally and morally wrong because children still have that choice we just think that they should be they should that they should be under the pressure of being understanding the importance of financial gain and financial stability. 
they also talk about like how a child at this age just needs to have fun if, except we're not talking about children we're talking about children who will grow up one day who will go get out of school and have to find their own job who won't be able to rely on their parents money and their middle class income middle class families are not rich to the point where they can just provide endless safety nets for every single child that falls a lot of their money for example that's why like the children of middle class family can't just do nothing all day. They still have to work because they still need to like provide for their own families to be able to enjoy their life. They need to make money because their families don't have that money to be able to do. Now, few arguments in my case. And in my speech today, I'm going to be going on to like about first an argument about how ha having a financially stable job ensures that you have a happy life outside of work. And secondly, weighing our worst case and best case scenario. So first, when you have a financially stable job, you ensure that you can have a happy life outside of work. They tell you that, like, for example, you're just going to define life as something that, like, is only going to be made better by, like, earning more money. But know that this motion talks about fulfilling in career, not in life. Fulfillment in career, we are more than happy to, for it to be about financial gain. But we tell you that that doesn't affect what people see as a fulfilling life. Because career and the life you have outside of your career is very different. You have friends that you have outside of your career. You have your family. You have your children, for example, or not, maybe. I don't know. But basically, the point I'm trying to make here is that just because you have a fulfilling career focused on financial gain doesn't mean that your life outside of it is fulfilled. In our world, it's more than likely that if you have a financially stable job, you can have a happy life outside of work. Why is this true? You can't enjoy life. You can't go out with your friends or do your hobbies, for example, like have acting lessons, etc. If you are struggling in debt, for example, or if you don't have the money to be able to afford things like acting lessons, for example, like art lessons, or to explore your passions. And that's what happens in prop world. If children are not taught the importance of financial gain in a career, when you're under the stress of working so many part-time jobs because your career is not financially fulfilling, that's worse than the mental health you have or like the, 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 the life you have when you're working Working a job you don't like. Why is this true? If you are unhappy with your job, but it's like financially stable, most of the time it doesn't affect the way you operate and live outside, at least not to the extent it would on the comparative. Let's, even if we assume our worst case scenario where it does affect the way you live outside of your work, this is first a very small percentage and it's really not likely. Second, there are still ways to escape it. You can leave your work early. Try not to focus on work. Like don't spend that much time obsessing over and becoming a workaholic. However, when you have no money, that's when you have no money, when you don't have when you don't have financial gain or financial stability, that op that completely like overlays all all aspects of your life you can't like for example you're not going to be able to ex afford lessons that can explore your passion you're not going to be able to go out to the bar with friends because you don't have the money to pay your drinks and you have to work and you're like still under the stress of your debt when you're not financially stable you impact the lives of the people or who around you who rely on you for example your family this impact is far worse on propositions world where you aren't able to enjoy your life outside of work than on our side, where the worst case scenario is that you don't enjoy your job, which is something that honestly exists already in the status quo, where we see people working jobs that they really don't like for just for so that they can get like a financial stability to be able to help their family. So weighing that, what does our work best case worst case look like? Probably the opposition's best, our worst case is that they have a well-paying job. They either enjoy this job in like okay amounts or they don't like it. Even if they don't like it, they have the financial resources to be able to explore what they do want to do and what they do like. Basically, you they talk about like how childs deserve happiness, but you, when you derive happiness mainly from your career, they may or may not have enough money. We think it's better that you derive happiness from other aspects of your life, which you are able to do so when you have a financially stable career. Therefore, in our worst case, these children are stuck with a job that they don't want. Even in that case, they have the money to be able to live comfortably outside of their life. When the, if they, even if they absolutely hate their job, they have the money to be able to like go back to college to get a new degree in like say art or music or journalism if they're unhappy with their current job. This is this is something that doesn't exist at all on propositions world where you don't teach kids the aim of financial gain. You allow them to like muck around and go to parties, and when they finally graduate and go into the real world, they have no idea what to do and no idea how to live a fulfilling life all around. Therefore, I think it's very clear that proposition takes today's debate. Thank you. Thank you for that speech. We now call on the deputy leader of the opposition. I can have a minute to rearrange my notes. Sure.
high DLO? Uh, let me just come at that. All right. Am I visible and audible? Yes, you are. Very good, thank you. Um, starting my speech in three, two, one. Happiness is better than sex. Uh, fulfillment is better than uh, better than having high paying jobs is what our side is supporting. Now, our, um, the, uh, I'll be starting out with some rebuttals to what the GAF side has said. The first thing they said is that the child will be happy when they have steady income and they can actually have the money to do their dream hobby, like basically getting some acrylics to do painting or get acting classes. And they say that we can't say that they're principally wrong. Now, in order to dismiss both of these rebuttals and rebut against it, we can say that like the child should be happy in their childhood life, like that first speaker has said, and how this will affect them when they grow up. Like, how can a child, how, how can God guarantee that when this child has been forced to work towards something they don't love and to only focus on high paying jobs and leave their dream job behind, that they was, in, as a child, that they will still love the job when they grow up, considering the fact that they need to follow the mind mindset of getting education, getting a high paying job. They might love it as a child, but because they are forced to not like it when they grow up, I don't think they'll care about the dream job anymore, which is bad because they are really affected by what the parents have said. Like my first speaker has said, they're very influential. They're very much defined by what their parents say. And the parents have already made the dream job look like a bad thing. Like how will they still want that? They say like, oh, this job is not good. It's not, pay it's not paying enough. And then they tell you to focus on another job, like, oh, be a doctor, be a lawyer. It's much of a high paying job. They're going to think that, oh, my parents said this can earn money. So there's already a symbol of hate. Or like not, not technically, no, I'll tell you later in five minutes. It's like a symbol of hate, like not even hate, like just like a symbol of like, um, you just don't, you won't like the, the hobby as much as you did or the dream job as much as you did when they were still a child. And they should be happy doing the job that like my first speaker has said in order to like continue because that's the only way they can get motivation and strive to like actually like do the job. And like on girls' side where they're literally just doing a job they don't like, even though they get a lot of money, they will still like be very much burnt out the, the thing they also said is that because like they can like they can find fulfillment in their parents or in their like family and friends, but they're just very contradictory or like just like not correct with emotion. Because emotion says that is fulfillment in career and not on other people. You have to find fulfillment in the career itself. That's what this debate is about. This debate about how uh, on our side we say painting and something they love is good, and on the side they're supposed to say that like the money that has high paying job is supposed to be like the fulfillment, but they're saying that it's in parents and friends outside of their job, which is just wrong in the first place. Uh, next thing they say is that they make enough money and like the parents think that this is like this, like they make enough money and that it's the parents that think that like, the parents are like, uh, like, like see that it's kind of like enough. Like it's like the child's like own like choice to actually like make the money because let's say they grow up and they're already separated from their parents and considering the motion states that they're in a middle class parent, which means they already have steady income to already fulfill their own, like they can fulfill their own like essential needs. I think that the child, can, like the child growing up can just like get their own like a steady job that they, when they are being happy and they can actually use their money to support themselves. They don't necessarily need to like, like, like support their parents because they already have a steady income. And like, we really said like childs are very like, absorbent and treat the advice of parents as like stone cold facts. And then the parents like prioritize and teach the children that like more money equals happiness. And this is how much money we should get because they say like parents are the one that decides how much the money should be. And they will like lock themselves in a constant cycle that cycle that I do not have enough money, which means that I failed in life. So they won't even consider doing something that they like because they're so obsessed you with are. it because from a child. I think that five minutes. They are so obsessed with getting more money. And like parents are going to indirectly like force children to choose. Like you have to inject the principle of like money, high paying over like something that's enjoyable, something you actually love doing, and actually want to do until the rest of your life. Because if you don't, you're going to be on your deathbed, living a life full of regrets. Like, oh, why didn't I choose this job? Choose another job that, yeah, sure, pays a lot higher. But I missed out my, like, half of my life trying to, like, do something that I don't like. And I can't even do the things I used to love as a child. And because my parents forced me to not like these things, or, like, forced me to, like, not look at these things as something that's, like, actually can yeah. earn enough money. I'll take that in five minutes. Um, basically, they're just going to think that, oh, I shouldn't do this job anymore because like it's not there and then like they're gonna regret it when they are on a deathbed. And like that they make, let's say they can say that the job it pays like sky high, but you work in a depressed cubicle and you are like like you're like filthy rich, they will choose job A because they are thought to prioritize money and money. But if the job B is more a dream job, but it's risky, they wouldn't choose it because they sure they love the job, they love it, it's the best thing in their entire life, but they won't love it at all because like their parents will force them to like not like it. And so I like, will like prioritize money and these children will obsess over it to even like give like any like care to the things they used to like and they used to want to pursue as a career because really they, they already have a very bad, bad image on it. 
and their beautiful happy life equals more money or else like more it's like basically you're just a failure and you won't do anything else except for just grind for the money and just like it's just very much very toxic mindset and then next they say it's like don't be a workaholic and don't like think of like don't think about your career like outside of your job like how do you do that when in your entire life your parents tell you that oh this should be your career option this should be the thing that you focus on high paying how do you not even focus on that and the fact that they also try to support the point by saying oh your parents that's just incredibly wrong like i said before it is that fulfillment in career not fulfillment in like other things next is going to be our our, our comparative which is basically like on um, like on Gulf side is very problematic like Gulf is a world where principle of choice is stripped away and you tell these children that I don't care if you become an artist or an author you should always prioritize high paying jobs I'm so sorry that people ask me for POI I don't have enough time already like they bring these kids into thinking what is right and what is fulfillment and they refuse to give their children the choice to decide for themselves and they grow up to realize that the job they are working for doesn't bring them fulfillment and they wasted tons of years on it basically regrets over their entire life. It's a world that where children's happiness will be ruined because we already said it prioritizes that because they need to be happy in order to actually live a happy life. Happy equals happy. And like it is a world where opting between something you love and something that earns money and they always just choose money when they should be choosing something they love because it's much more important to them. It's much more healthy for them. It's a world that strips away like your freedom to choose a world that doesn't care about your movie no more. And mobility and forces you to listen to what they think is right. And Gulf's world is a place that people think they are like not successful if they don't have a high paying job. And a comparison between like friends who have higher paying jobs and saying that they are more fulfilled in their career as compared to someone like compared to like someone who's like working a nine to five job, even if you can still feed your family. And on Gulf, on our side, uh, on their side, the children of these middle class parents would like would like never have like fulfillment in their like their life. They would only want the money and they would just like prioritize it over happiness, which will actually bring mental harm to their children. And like we already said, how much, I already said how much it will affect the children in the long, like in the long term when they grow up because they're not gonna like the job, dream job anymore. So no matter what Gauss says about what, how they can still have money to get the acting classes, it's just not gonna be right. But on our side, we provide them with happiness. The pay is low, but at least they're, at least they're happy doing it. It's better than living a life with low pay, but a job you like. It, it's better than li living a life with low pay, but a job you love, and it'll give you, and you'll give all your time to and dedicate your life to it, and you can still get money to support yourselves compared to a high paying job, but you hate every single second of it. Yeah, they, 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 they sure can say that, oh, the job is high, but if you hate the job you're working in, you're going to get burnt out easier and just don't have the motivation to work compared to outside. And yeah, with that, I'm proud to oppose. Thank you for that speech. We'll now call on the government whip. Um, okay, so let me get my timer. So basically, I prefer POIs verbally, um, and my speech will begin now. So today in my speech, I'll be going over two main clashes. Uh, firstly, is, is, is this sort of narrative in the interest of a middle-class parent? And secondly, will this narrative actually benefit the child? So firstly, under the first clash, we tell you that yes, right? A middle-class parent knows these sort of financial difficulties and knows why being financially stable is so important. Therefore, we think that it is in their obligation, or at least they are the ones who know best to be able to actually tell their children and remind them how important being, how being financially stable is. So opposition tells us a few things under this class, right? Firstly, they tell us that on their first speaker, they tell us that being middle class isn't poor and they aren't going to be under financial pressure and they can survive. Therefore, they can go pursue whatever interests, right? We think that, yes, obviously their parents may be financially stable, but they, they aren't financially stable to the point where they can support their children until, until they're like 50 and pursuing their dream job, right? They somehow think that middle class families are so rich that they can help their children and grandchildren be financially, which they can't. They will have like they will have to retire one day and have to work extra hard in order for their child to like frolic around and not think much about income, right? We think that middle class denotes the fact that they can pay for their child's needs and be comfortable, but it doesn't mean that like they can just give them money to like be an artist when they grow up um, and their child doesn't really have to care about their income, right? We think that like it's it's very important for their these sort of children to actually be financially stable because their parents aren't able to give them a safety net like rich like rich people might be able to, right? Therefore, on our side, we emphasize the importance of financial stability for especially these middle class people because we think that it's a very important aspect about how it greatly affects their quality of life, which opposition completely misses on, right? 
we tell, we tell you specifically that people aren't going to be able to explore their interests or live comfortably if they aren't financially stable, right? This is something we only have on our side because we're, we're act actively encouraging these children to choose jobs based on their financial aspects. On the opposition side, it's more likely that th these people will like not really have that much money. So even if they're doing there's something passionate about, they're likely going to be constantly burdened about not having enough money or not even be able to like spend enough time um, like doing other things they enjoy or at least like having time outside of their job, even though it's something they like, right? It's not going to be, their life isn't going to be at a, as high as quality as we could have on our side. Opposition also constantly ignores the fact that this is an actual debate, right? What a middle-class parent would want is very important. And instead they, under this first clash and under their entire case, basically argue from the children's perspective, which isn't really the focus of, of the debate. This debate is about having a fulfilling career and not about life in general, or like having to like work under a job you hate, right? It's really weird how opposition suddenly doesn't want to talk about a fulfilling life when their first speaker's entire speech is about like limiting a fulfilling life, right? You think that financial gain and fulfilling careers are really important and therefore under this first clash, we tell you that we win this clash because we tell you exactly what a middle-class parent look like wants and what kind of struggles they went through and therefore why it is part of their obligation to be able to actually give their child this sort of narrative and encourage them to think about financial stability. Before I move on to my second class, does anyone have a PY? Okay, no. Um, great. So let me move on. Secondly, will this actually benefit the child, right? So we tell you that yes, because one day these children are going to be able to use this financial stability to actually help them live a comfortable life and get back off their feet after like college, right? Or get a good job. And we think that they are able to actually use this money to flourish in life or use this money to better explore their interests and a lot better than opposition can because they're not going to be like burdened by their job or um be struggling, right? Opposition side under this clash tells us that firstly, their main point is that the ch child will think that for the rest of their lives, money is the most important thing and only care about it and not really care about their dream job anymore until like they're on their deathbed or something. Firstly, we tell you that it's not like parents can erase like all sort of feelings or hobbies these child's have, right? Or like completely mind, like, like brainwash them, right? We think that um, the parents are only there to be guiding their child or giving them a nudge or giving a sort of concept that financial stability is very important, right? These children at the end of the day will still know that they enjoy this job and hope to get back at it after they are like financially stable when they're 10 or 20 years later, right? Even if it is true, as opposition says, that like they won't care about their dream job anymore, we tell you that if these ch children can be abandoning their dream jobs or hobbies so easily, then this probably isn't going is it even going to be something they're passionate about in the first place, right? This literally contradicts their side because once these children choose this career, they like if they actually do choose their dream job, they are going to get bored of it, as opposition said, because they like on our side, they tell us they can get rid of this job so easily or like forget about what kind of things they're passionate about. At least on our side, it's more likely that once they're financially stable, they can use the money to pursue other um other sort of passions or other things they're interested about and it's likely that they will enjoy this even more because there's a separation between like their normal work and their job right secondly they tell us lastly that the child has the right to choose again this is not an act of motion not a policy motion but an act of motion it's not like the parents are going to be forcing their child to do whatever the parents want it's a narrative which means that the parents are going to be encouraging the child to use the financial aspect as a very important deciding factor more than how happy or like happy you might be at your job, right? Um, and we tell you that like obviously the child doesn't end up doing like what their parents exactly told you. It's going to be still going to be their own choice. But at least right now they have this sort of concept on understand the importance of being financially stable. What opposition fails to recognize is that the fact that parents are parents, which means that they will at the end of the day still understand what their child likes and what their child is good at and probably um, what their child would succeed at, right? They completely ignore a mechanization about how the, like in our first speak, speaker, about how the job you end up getting is not going to be something you're bad at, right? Um, we think that like these parents obviously have an experience and understanding about how real life works and they're not going to push you to be a doctor if you're not even good at science or like not good at that sort of field, right? They're going to, there is go, they are probably going to encourage their child to get a more financially rewarding job in this, in the field that they are still interested in or still good at, right? Because if like they aren't even good at their field, they're probably not going to get a financially well-paying job in the first place. There is no, there also, there is, 
like we also clarify that financial gain is not something endless, right? There is a set metric. There's no set metric to what financial gain means for our parents because there's very different, right? So under the first clash, second clash, we tell you that um, the child is able to benefit more on our side because financial stability is very important for them. And also we clarify the fact, like our mechanization as to how exactly these children will not even be good at it be at a job they're not good at in the first place. And because we win the first and second clash, I'm so proud to propose. Thank you for that speech. We're now calling the opposition whip. Uh, am I audible and visible? Yes, you are. Okay, my speech. Oh, and I prefer verbal POIs, and I have no preferred gender pronouns. And my speech will be starting in three, two, one. Inside opposition's world, our children may live on the streets, may have to eat cup noodles, but they are fulfilled. They have a loving partner. They get to work as an aspiring artist, or they get to even chow down on their favorite ice cake ice cream and feel happy and fulfilled. But inside government, they are in a loop of, I want more money, more money, and more money. They will never appreciate anything you have. Like example, get a loving partner. Does it equals fulfillment, AKA money? I get to eat my favorite ice cream. Wait, does it equals fulfillment? They, AKA money. They would spiral into depression in life where you're just not simply happy. And all the states are uh, statesmen of they would get to try another job yeah. uh, they would not uh, they would get to actually double in their passion when when they get another job and cite government states that if these children are uh, and in our side we said that uh, these passion this passion would be completely stamped out and these children won't even consider even like chasing this passion but site government said uh says that you know uh if they easily forget this passion they won't uh why isn't uh why isn't it even a, a worthwhile passion to follow when you easily forget of it just remember in your world your uh these parents nudge may nudge them not force them but nudge them into the supposed right direction in life and of course as we keep stating that children in these uh in their age of course would treat this as fact they would treat their parents advice as fact. yes your poi What's your mechanism for children being easily impressionable? Well, all we see in status quo are children defying their parents, especially when they're at the age of adolescence. Um, for my, mecha uh, my, my mechanism of this statement, children at this age is very susceptible to, uh, you know, other, uh, more susceptible to people telling or ordering what they do. Like you may be rebellious in your teenage years, but when you're a child, once your mother raises his voice, you would of course listen. This applies throughout all the ages. If you keep on insisting that children, you must focus on money. You need to focus on money because only then you'll feel happy. Only then you'll be fulfilled. But it honestly, you just put them in an endless loop of like, oh, I got more, I have that money, I have more money, but I'm not fulfilled yet. As we stated, you, they won't appreciate anything they get. You know why? I'm not believing something there, yeah. Why do you believe that any of your arguments apply to this actor motion, which is from the parent's perspective? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll settle that uh, this POI later on my speech on what should these parents prioritize. Okay, further, further on, they think uh, as just continuing my uh, previous my previous statement of they would just end up in an endless loop of I want more money. I want more money. Money equals fulfillment. If I don't have enough money, I am not fulfilled. Even if I have a learning, uh, loving partner. Oh, does it equal money? Oh, I like I have a passion. Oh, does it equal money? They would just go in this endless loop of just, oh, I prioritize money. 
Money equals fulfillment. Money equals happiness. They would spiral into depression in life where you're just not simply happy and all the state are like... I get... Uh, in the life where you're just not simply happy and all the statesmen, or they would get, get to try another the job. They like, the passion of it, it is just completely stamped out as they think that money equals fulfillment and passion. You know why? Time, sadness. In Ops world, decline. In Ops world, the future of these children would be much brighter. They get to live a happy life and they are not depressed. You have much more chances in a risky business as they devoted their life into this passion. But instead, in Gulf world, you get paid sky high. But these children are filthy poor in the happiness department. But why is happiness so important? Like, you won't uh, answering, but why is happiness so important? You know, these children wouldn't fall into a depressed state, though they won't inflict self-harm. It even protects protects and heals their mental health it, and keeps them in a state of, you know, more fulfillment in their life and they would not be sad and whatnot. So I can't see why side government states that in their world, their, uh, the, the children in their future get to be more happy. But uh, you know why? A middle, what would a middle class parent want or any single parent want? They want these children to be happy. They don't want them to inflict any self-harm. You're not just simply have, uh, you're just not uh, inside Gulf's world. These children are just not simply happy and all the statesmen are But why is happiness so important that for like any parent they want, of course, want these children to be happy and fulfill and not have stress, be in the and not inflict any self harm. Yes, your POI. In your world, what's the likelihood that every single child is going to get their dream job, dream job and going to have an amazing success? As I stated previously, if they get the choice to not prioritize money and prioritize their passion, they will, of course, devote their entire life to it, which will, of course, achieve skill and whatnot and secure their place at their dream job. So that could be completely dis disregarded. A middle-class parent, if their passion does not completely, does not exist, uh, Site governments state that if their passion com uh, completely does not exist, it's probably a passion not worth chasing. These children, as we state, would suppress these passions because of your incentive to inflict such a mindset to these children that money equals good. And they would, of course, prioritize this financial gain instead of prioritizing happiness because they think that money equals happiness. And that's why I'm, uh, and therefore I'm proud to oppose. Thank you. Thank you for that speech. We now call on the opposition reply speaker. Oh, give me a minute. Am I visible and audible? Yes, you are. Um, we can keep it on. Heading my speech in three, two, one. Today, to start off my reply speech, I'd like to give some um, comparative clashes. 
It's like, are the children going to be happier on a gaff side or upside? They keep telling us that like this is the actor emotion and that the children are supposed to be not like get like should be focusing on the, the parents. But thing is that without the parent, like the best of the children listening to the parents' narrative in the first place, no one is going to live a high-paying life and no one's going to actually get like there's not going to be an outcome on like gaff side because like that's like yeah, yeah, the parents are active, but isn't it the children that like reaches the end of like the Kind of their life and the one getting the money, the one studying, the one working in real life. And the parents are not going to be the one that helps them their entire life. And they're the ones to lead their own lives. Like without them listening, no, like they're not going to pursue that. So like we definitely need the children to be important in this debate in order for this entire debate to exist. So uh, are the children going to be happy on gaff side or upside? Basically, we already said uh, from our first speaker to our second speaker to the third speaker that they will not have enough, like they will not have enough money, yeah, but they don't like, but they don't have like and still kind of two things they love. And then um, Offside has like said something about uh, they say that the parents are going to know what the child loves and like give them the job that is suitable and think is good for them and they're not necessarily going to focus on like doctors or like uh, lawyers jobs and stuff but like if they knew what they love and like what to like I want to give them the best like why didn't they give them the dream job that outside are like focusing on so much on like on happiness and how you're going to get happiness from a dream job in the first place and they're like and basically, focusing on this narrative is just basically just going to be better on our side if we focus on like our own narrative of like happiness is prioritized over like a high paying jobs and like it's important for the child because you said once again that in order for this child to actually listen to you, they have to either choose to be on like either gaff side where they, our parents are like forcing them to listen to this narrative and we have to say that like child, like the child must be the one, like they can like choose, like do the dream that they want and actually choose something that like happy in that they're going to love and determine to do. And, um, and they also said like they're not gonna care about the dream job and they can bend it so easily and they're not gonna be dedicated to it anymore. So like like to compare this with like downside and upside, like our first week I said a lot of times that like, children are easily influenced and they can easily be defined. And then like on our like on our side, like isn't it gonna be worse on their side? Because like if they go into a job they don't like, wouldn't they want to like give up on it even more? Because like if they don't reach their goal, they're going to hate their parents because like this is not gonna be beneficial for the parents at all. Because like the parents are gonna be hated because obviously if your parents are you the thing you believe in your entire life, they tell you like, oh, oh this is actually a bad thing and you shouldn't follow it in your entire life. When you grow up into being like a like an adult in society, obviously you're not gonna follow that. You're gonna like have some some like hate towards it, right? Because your parents told you that and that's what you believe in because they're important in your life. We said like we said a thousand times already, practically a thousand times already about how it will define people. And it's going to be even like the, the same outcome on the other side because like on, on our side, we have that doing that, we have them doing the dream job. And we already said multiple times that like, they even said that like, we can abandon the job so easily and they're not going to be dedicated to it anymore, which means that they should, like it's not going to apply in the first place that they're going to continue their dream job. But our side has to say that like we on the second speaker speech, they have already said that that the child will be like have this narrative in their head they're obviously going to have the narrative that they're going to like that the job is not good so obviously they're not going to like it so clearly they weren't listening to the, uh, our speech when they were saying that if they keep focusing on this narrative they're going to hate the job unless they focus on the narrative we are not focusing on that so we practically have a bigger chance or even more chance or just like uh of them getting the job they love and actually continuing until the end because on their side they have a narrative that blocks that and there's just going to be the di like different outcomes on like outside and their side which is very clear from what i said basically include everything um basically if on our side that's we do we bring children more happiness or uh like on gas side or upside was it practically obviously it's going to be on upside because like we can actually give them the happiness they need and actually get financial income to, for themselves we already said multiple times that the parents that like, do not like have their own stable income their middle class they can actually get it and that the parents get like benefits on outside of their side obviously they're on their side they don't get any benefits at all but and they just don't generally get any benefits at all on the other side because they're going to get hated and stuff. And yeah, I got I got it. Thank you for that speech. And to end the debate as a whole for us, we would now call on the government to apply speaker. I will begin my speech. Three. So I think it's extremely funny how proposition has, uh, towards the last um, part of their entire case, has tried to support their flimsy case on the basis of like, oh, whatever the parents want, right? However, they've completely ignored that the fact that this is an actor motion, but um, regardless of, of um, like, there are these arguments that they tried to bring up at the end. Um, I would like to fully rebut everything else that they brought up to us in today's debate. So firstly, they talk about the mental health of like the child, right? Like they can 
pursue a career in the direction of fulfillment and whatever they want. Um, and like, it's okay if, if they're poor, at least they're doing what they love. However, if the child is talented enough to be like, say a successful actor on prop side, then they would be able to do that on our side once they have something to fall back on. Like, or the, if they were really, really talented, then obviously the parents know that and that they can do this job in, in the first place, right? So um, mainly what happens to on op to these people with without enough talent or luck to achieve their dream job? What will happen is they work in like a bad and grungy job like a McDonald's worker or they just end up dirt poor they won't be able to achieve their dream jobs anyway um and um like okay if that's what they want then sure but we will prove to you why um we prove to you why on our side they still end up better right because what happens on our side is these people who aren't talented enough to achieve success um will work uh, in their dreams job in their dream job will work a different good job that they're like happy enough with that they're good at and and uh, just, uh, uh, and enjoy enough to be good at like on our side right and they'd end up with stability which is overall still better than having like a job that they like slightly more on um on op side um because you know they have like a house and and money to pay their bills right um and next secondly they talk to us about how like children are super impressionable and will do whatever parents say however if parents are seriously that abusive and pressurizing when then when someone grows up and have like a conscience they won't even follow everything that the parents said because like they don't own them anymore right so the harms that op brings don't even exist it don't even exist right now thirdly they talk about like parents don't want children to inflict self-harm they want their children to be happy then in, if this is the case then they won't force their kids won't make them only think about money on our side because obviously the children will be sad. The way that this narrative works, as we've explained countless times, is that they won't even be that forcible to begin with. People, the parents will in, in, encourage the ch children to pursue, per, to pursue a career that they both enjoy and will give them enough money to ensure that they're happy as well, right? Um, like parents aren't just soulless, like mindless creatures. Um, and uh, finally, they talked about like, oh, uh, parents will express this notion through like saying you're, um, you should do something that will earn like money, right? More money, more money, more money. But no, we've told you that this is more like it, it's more like get a stable job that has a high enough paycheck so you can pay it off, pay off debts and you don't need to worry so much about finances. And like, as I've said in first speaker, it's a matter of what the child loves already. Like if I hate medicine and my parents tell me I should be a doctor, I won't listen to them. So instead, the parents would push the children to earn money in a career that they know the child likes enough for the child to even listen to them. Them, right like if the child is interested in both law and creating art the parent would encourage the child to pursue art uh, to pursue law because like the child like likes it enough right and they're both reasonable if the child thinks they're both reasonable career choices and um like they don't revolt at the at the idea of having to go into law then the child um, will be able to have a stable life and enjoy their job enough. And we don't see why this is even a bad thing because like, at least they're not dirt poor and at least they are happy enough on our side. Um, um, and overall, wait, it's four minutes, is it three minutes, sorry. Um, and overall, I've proven to you very clearly why proposition takes today to, today's debate. Um, thank you. Very